This podcast is brought to you by the new Nikon Coolpix P1 and P2 digital cameras, the world's first compact cameras with built-in Wi-Fi. Now you can take great pictures and easily transfer them directly to your computer or printer wirelessly. Learn more at NikonDigital.com. Switching work, uh, window key tab, window key tab, yeah. and then you can use the wheel. Cool. You guys gonna anti-alias the? Yes. They actually are in that in that build over there. So, oh really? Yeah. This is an older, older build. Older build. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I just noticed the first thing, Jaggies. Yeah. Cool. And then you select I doing that. Yeah. Oh, that's actually really cool. So you can go all the way back like there. It's a lot of fun. And then of course you got the transparency and everything. Now for. Uh, windows that are for applications that are built around like different interfaces where like windows aren't the traditional size and they aren't using the same Luna or the same old school windowing system. If those will be backwards compatible. That's what you should be able to run any yet for sure. Um, for gaming, the guy we talked to the other day said that you guys had legacy metadata built in for about 2,000 old games. Does that mean that I need to have that data for a game to run on this machine? No, no. So what you do is uh, you install an older game. Well, we, basically a non-Mongrel aware game. Uh, when you install it, we're able to, to recognize the first time you run it. Or when you open the Games Explorer from the start menu, we'll actually be able to find it from there as well. When we find it, we add it. When we pull down the metadata from the web service, we pull down the box art, we pull down community support links, so links back to news groups, community sites, um, uh, the box art description, and all kinds of cool stuff. But it's not like it's absolutely required for me to run my game. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so it's not going to... It's not going to shut out a whole bunch of older games, right? No, no. But, all right, and then I'm looking at this sort of thing, solutions to performance problems. That's funny. Yeah. And then there, uh, the guy we were talking to the other day was talking about performance ratings, that sort of thing. You'd be able to get a single number to quantify your entire system performance. Yeah, so long as you have to memorize what kind of RAM you have, whatever. Exactly. Especially at the point of purchase when you're trying to buy some software. You can flip it over, you have a four machine, you know, four, four below software. Sorry, people don't remember. Do I have 512? or do Yeah, it's going to be great for Granny. You know, she knows that the grandkid Toby has a four because she bought him that last year. She's been getting the World of Warcraft 3. It, it's rated for yeah, Absolutely. So what other features you know are built into the OS itself that are brand new that are gonna blow us all the way here? Um, one of the great things is uh, you know you probably if you, you talked to the guy that they said two thousand titles, he probably told you about parental controls, right? Yeah we did. We talked about, about the parental controls, controls. games explore. Yeah we did the um, game thing. Anything else that's uh, did he did he tell you about search? Yeah, uh, briefly. You can start just typing in like uh, yeah. and that and that works across you know all your documents, all your your program files, the games, metadata, all that stuff. Yeah, Word, Excel documents, um, email. So it's able to search content within oh, email too. Email too. Yeah, so if you, if you type in Chris right there, it'll show you everything that you sent or maybe receive some, some someone. And it categorizes it by like programs, email, games, blah, blah, blah. You can span it open. And, 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 and it searches built in everywhere, not just here. But it, yeah, as you type here, this list view will just shrink and smash things that you type. Oh, it's going to do the change how Windows searches. Yeah. So you turn it off if you want it. Like so, the indexing and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, the solutions to problems thing, how accurate is that going to be? I noticed in the. Let's see, what was the tab? In the. Uh, in the system information window, it was bringing up. Okay. Under. Uh, uh, okay. This stuff. Drivers interfering with Windows resuming for sleep mode. How many of those different scenarios are built in? How many different, I mean, how accurate is this? Is this going to be actually useful? Is this going to be something that sits there and only ever comes up with something real? The hope is that it will be useful. Because, I mean, these seem like specific problems. These are like things that I can figure out if I spend 20 minutes on my machine and drill through because I know what I'm doing. But having it flag me and tell me exactly what's going on is a really useful feature. Yeah. What I imagine you'll see is a, a notification will pop up alerting you to something. Click on it. It'll bring you here and, it, and present you with the solution to the problem. That'll be very useful. So, all right. Well, I think we're going to bounce around a couple of other booths, but thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you guys should, uh, if you haven't yet, check out all the different kind of pillars that are along the way. They're going to really dive in deep on what's new with, with the media player and the music library, also with photos. And there's some great new uh, uh, photo editing software that's, that's built into Vista and allows you to do all kinds of great things. Um, very cool. I'm testing your performance right now on the system, apparently. I'm going to break your build, though. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs>
place finally commanded. Very cool. And so this will give the rating, I mean, when it's finished, obviously, it'll give us the rating, tell us what. I love the interface. I love how clean it looks. I love the little glowing, the transparency and all that. It looks like a very, very also nice the, uh, Oh, sorry about that. Windows Defender, have you seen that yet? Spyware stuff? Yeah, anti-spyware stuff. Anti-phishing, build into Internet Explorer. Um, cool. 360 controller works. Did you hear that? Oh, really? Yeah. What now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 360 controller just works. And, and you can actually plug the wire controller in today to your XP machine. Windows update to pull down the driver, and you can work with all your existing games. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. All right. <laughs> it's still running the performance. It takes a while. Of course. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, I just want to get a feel for all the neat little things that they're doing. Um, also, there's a, there's a new SKU called Ultimate. What? There's a new SKU, you know, for fresh professionals kind of where it teetered out. There's one above that now that's called Ultimate that kind of blends the best of most worlds, gives you everything on the enterprise side, gives you everything on the consumer side. Networking and all the fun administrative yeah. stuff, yeah. Uh, but most importantly, it gives you Media Center. So you can buy an Ultimate SKU, you can buy a supported TV tuner card, and you have Media Center right here on your PC. I like that it blurs. What about tablet? Tablet as well, yeah. Same tablet, the whole stuff's just built in. Okay, yeah. nice. Interesting. Any, oh, well, you're the games guy, but any any news on updates for um, Windows Media Center for Vista? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been completely updated. Um, the guys, I think they're just like you know, two booths over. They're giving that great great demo on okay. the Media Center. Check that out. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is a scenario where... Uh, oh, I like this. This is a new interface for this. For, uh, Very cool. For the education department. Ah, there. It doesn't give me a firm number yet, but it's obviously... What does this number mean? <laughs> what number? Cool. Oh, you guys got online help now? It appears so. What? It said it appears so. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many new things, you know. Uh, the other cool stuff is, um, they, they, uh, if you go to the control panel, and under networking, there's this thing called people near me. The idea being that, um, you know, in a work environment, you all get around a conference room, wireless is enabled, the ability to create an ad hoc network on the fly, share files, share a workspace environment. So, like, you're looking at the same PowerPoint that one guy brought in, you're making annotations and notes all at the same time. Some of the office, uh, some of those pieces are in office, right? Yeah. But he's bringing them to Windows? Bringing them to Windows, yeah. I like, I was just noticing the interface for, let's see if I can get it to do it again. I can just click, yeah, I can just click right oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is a new thing. Though, that oh, that's nice. I like that a lot. As it, as it fills out, you know, each, each drop down will bring a sibling that lists the siblings. Yeah, that's cool. That is so useful. And you can still type to a regular pad in there. To it as well. Uh, oh, really? So I can just be like. You type SQL and users. Because users is the new documents and settings. Oh, okay. About a tenth of the way. Okay. Very nice. I can do like view network stuff. Very cool. And you're going to be able to diagnose network problems apparently? Great. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Very cool. This podcast is brought to you by the new Nikon Coolpix P1 and P2 digital cameras, the world's first compact cameras with built-in Wi-Fi. Now you can take great pictures and easily transfer them directly to your computer or printer wirelessly. Learn more at NikonDigital.com.